Hello everyone. In this session, we will take a look at a series of multiple choice questions. You would learn about what is the questions asking you about. So you would learn about how to approach this question from a knowledge. What is the question asking about? What's the topic? What's the area of competency that they want you to know? That's one that's important. Two is how to answer the question, strategy on how to answer the question. I always tell the students to put yourself in the shoes of the exam writer. It's so easy to write the correct answer choice because that's the correct answer choice. What's more difficult for the exam writer is to select ex actually the wrong answers. And under those circumstances, if they select obvious wrong answers and you understand the topic, it's easy to spot those wrong answers. So it's harder for the exam writer to choose the wrong answer because they have to, to make the wrong answer difficult. And that's difficult by itself because the right answer is correct. They know the correct answer, they can put it. So if you understand the topic, it's easy for you then to spot what's obviously wrong. So that's what you need to know. Also, as I'm going over these questions, I will make sure I will point out what to look for in the question. For example, if there's except four, all the following are correct except, you have to be careful. Except four is you're looking for one answer, maybe three incorrect, one correct, or three correct and one incorrect. So you have to be careful what you are being asked. Always, if there is a question with a lot of numbers, read what you are being asked first. Because if the question involves a lot of, lot of financial data, they could ask you many questions. First, look at what am I being asked? So as you navigate through the data, you would start to kind of pull that relevant data that you need to answer the question. So I will show you these techniques step by step, whether you are a CPA exam candidate, CMA student, or an accounting student, or a finance student. You need to learn how to tackle multiple choice questions. It's not only the topic, it's the technique, the strategy that I will show you. Let's go ahead and start to tackle these questions. Let's take a look at this question. The question reads, to calculate EPS, okay, earnings per share, which of the following should be deducted from net income and in arriving at income available for shareholders? So when we compute basic earnings per share, we have to deduct certain things, should be deducted. What are those things? Is it one, dividend that have accumulated during the period on cumulative preferred irrespective whether they have been declared or not irrespective of that do we have to deduct those and the answer is yes we have to deduct those we have to deduct those because they are cumulative for cumulative whether they are declared or not we deduct them therefore one is the correct answer and D is the correct answer as well, possible correct answer. We can eliminate this, we could eliminate this. So the question is, number two, is it deducted or not? Okay, dividend that are declared on a non-cumulative preferred stock during the period, irrespective whether they have been distributed. And the answer is yes. Once the dividend are declared, they are deducted. And for a non-cumulative, it's only deducted if declared. Whether it's distributed, paid or not, is irrelevant. But non-cumulative has to be declared. Cumulative does not even have to be declared. Cumulative, irrespective, whether it's declared or not, it's deducted. Non-cumulative, it, it has to be declared. Whether you paid at that period or in the future, that's irrelevant. Therefore, the answer is B, both one and two therefore what you do you come here and you select the correct answer and you check your answer let's take a look at this question that involved computation specifically this question is asking us to compute let's see basic eps for this company all right we have a lot of information let's get started on december 31st Scholl had 200 common shares outstanding as well as 5,000 preferred shares. So 200,000 of common, 5,000 of preferred. Each preferred share holds the potential to be converted into three, into three a common stock. 
this information is irrelevant for us because we're computing the basic you could just eliminate this for this question if if you know why it's good because we're computing only the basic not dilutive over the course of 20 x4 the company distributed ten thousand dollar in dividend on the preferred stock all right that's relevant for us because they distributed ten thousand dollar in dividend also the company had 2000 convertible bond carrying 8% interest outstanding again it's fine it's good information but for the basic of for the purpose of basic EPS that's irrelevant each of the bond is converted into 20 shares okay again we're not computing uh, uh, diluted the conversion of both debt and preferred could dilute okay but we're not looking for diluted the total net income for the year is 900,000 and the income tax rate is 20% easy what am I looking for basic earnings per share how much belong of net income to the common shareholders net income is 900,000 we have to pay 10,000 to the common to the preferred shareholders what we're left with income to available to common shareholders is 890,000 well income available to shareholders is 890,000 and how many how many sh common stock outstanding do we have 200,000 if we take those two we come up to the answer of four dollars and 45 cent therefore diluted earnings per share is four dollars and 45 cent you gotta know how to do this very quickly if we're looking at basic earnings per share always check your answer let's take a look at this if you like what you just saw how to solve these multiple choice questions whether you are an accounting a finance student a CPA exam candidate a CMA exam candidate, I strongly suggest you visit my website for additional MCQs, video MCQs. That's going to help you whether you are a student or studying for a professional certification. The best investment you can make is invest in yourself. Check out farhatlectures.com. Start your free trial so you have access to additional resources and succeed. Good luck, and I hope to see you on the website.